Today, we are going to be talking about how to get food in if you have a low appetite. Now, you might have a low appetite for a variety of reasons. Maybe you just have always had a low appetite and you're really pushing for growth or needing to get more food in. Maybe you're in a place where you're sick and you need to get calories in, or you're in a growth phase within bodybuilding and you're having a really hard time eating more food because you are full. So these are gonna be great tips to be able to utilize when you do not want to eat a lot, but you need to get a lot of food in or just need to get food in in a little bit more efficient way. First, we want to address stress and don't worry, I have fun titles for them all, so just keep tuned. But when we look at stress and we look at the GI tract, the GI tract is innervated by the parasympathetic nervous system. And when we stress, the sympathetic nervous system takes over and that puts us in a place where we're not able to truly digest our food or digest it in the most optimal way because stress is not only going to change your appetite but like I said your digestion which is gonna make it harder to get more food in so being able to take a look and make sure that you are getting seven to eight hours of sleep or seven to nine hours of sleep the more the better in some cases also being able to make sure that you have wind down time when it comes to your evening and you have that morning routine in place making sure that you're getting outside walks in. They can be inside, but we really wanna turn on that parasympathetic activity. So making sure that our heart rate is around 110 or below and addressing life stressors as a whole. They're gonna be different for all of us, but being able to take time to even know what you're stressed about and taking a look at that is gonna be the first step in being able to address your stress. One other quick thing within stress is we wanna ensure that we're training within our recovery windows here. So if you're putting yourself in a place where you are training past what you can recover from, that is going to put more stress on your body. But going into number two, which is going to be question digestion. You've probably heard you are what you eat, but more you are what you digest. And if you're not digesting the food that you are having, you're really not even getting the nutrients or the quality of calories that you're needing from that food to begin with. So making sure that you're chewing your food thoroughly, making sure you wait until your heart rate is within a few beats of resting heart rate before you start eating, ensuring that you have good posture while you eat, you don't eat too fast, and also making sure you don't drink too much water during your meal. So being able to take a look at your digestion is going to be extremely helpful. Moving right along to some keen protein. I told you there are fun titles here, but when we look at protein, a lot of protein sources are more complex and so they're harder to be broken down. And we're also going to have a protein limit per meal that we can comfortably digest. And for myself, that's around 45 grams of protein. If I eat past that, then I am going to have some digestive distress, even if the sourcing of protein is completely fine. And protein does give us a higher satiety score. So if you're in a place where you can even push over some of those calories to carbs and fats, that might be better for you when it comes to being able to help within your appetite. So some things that you can do is making sure that you are choosing things that have less connective tissue. So this is going to make it easier to digest. So instead of having red meat, maybe switching over to a white fish or instead of having chicken, switching to a white fish. And instead of having sand, being able to switch over to again something that is going to be broken down a little more easy like a white fish now you don't have to bring everything down to white fish but just talking about things that have very little connective tissue and this is also going to work when it comes to choosing food particles that are already broken down so choosing things like shredded chicken or ground beef ground turkey ground chicken those are going to be a lot easier to digest because they're smaller particles and they've already been broken down a little bit there now we're gonna take a look at high rate carbohydrates and carbohydrates are phenomenal when you're in a growth phase. They are pretty easy to digest and to be able to get a lot in one sitting. So being able to take a look at the type of carbs that you're eating, again, looking at processed foods versus whole foods, keeping digestion in mind, but being able to switch over to rice-based products can be really great. They're gonna be easy on your digestive system, easy to digest, and they're going to be easy to 
to eat and easily accessible too when we look at things like rice cakes or minute rice, but rice-based options, cream of rice included, are gonna be phenomenal to have in place. You can even look at your fiber and possibly lowering your fiber a little bit to ensure that it's not slowing down digestion. Again, we want fiber in place and the recommended daily amount is gonna be 10 to 14 grams per 1,000 calories. But if you're struggling with getting food in and you take a look and your fiber is really high, maybe it's up in the 50s, 60s, 70s, that could be causing some issues when it comes to your fullness. So being able to swap out some lower fiber options is gonna be really helpful. And being able to look again at the sourcing of the foods that you are eating. So things like jellies and syrups, as well as dried fruit can be such great bangs for your bucks of being able to get in a high amount of calories and carbs with a very low amount of volume. Wheat can cause gas and bloating in some people. So if you start to notice this trend with yourself, again, swapping out different things to really prioritize your digestion so you're not having more discomfort along the way. As well as being able to take a look at liquid carbs. So things like a Gatorade or something like Mike's Mix are gonna be really easy options or even orange juice to be able to get in some more carbs in a really easily digestible way. Now, after hearing all of this, you might be a little bit skeptical on vegetables and who's gonna blame you? They're higher in fiber, they're higher volume. You might think I need to ditch those right now if I have a low appetite, but we really still wanna focus on how we feel and how our bodies function and our body does need micronutrients. So you don't just wanna think about macronutrients. Micronutrients are so extremely vital and important and they're going to help your body running optimally, feeling your best, and that is going to help you continue to grow or do what your goal is at this moment. So when we take a look at vegetables, we want to limit the ones that are going to be gas forming. So maybe we're limiting things like broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, but feel free to have vegetables in place and being able to think about how you can get creative with them. If you want some options on how to get vegetables in, I will go ahead and pop up a video we did on how we get our fruits and vegetables in in a day and how we do it in a very realistic way, but also being able to sneak them into smoothies and soups, as well as being able to think about how they can be easily chopped up and mixed into your meals. You also wanna ensure that you cook all of your vegetables because eating vegetables raw can cause uh, more distress on your stomach. So being able to make sure that all the vegetables are cooked, as well as staying with low FODMAP options. If you've never heard of that term before, you can just type it into Google for some low FODMAP options on anything that you need, because if it is a higher FODMAP, it is going to be more of an irritant. And so that is going to cause some stomach discomfort. And you notice I'm mentioning your digestion a lot, but exactly what I said of you are what you digest. And if you're having digestive distress, that is going to make it really hard to eat a high amount of food. Trust me, I have tried it before and it is no fun. Now we're gonna chat fat. So fat is gonna be so helpful if you're trying to push calories up because it's got more bang for your calorie buck. When we're taking a look at proteins and carbs, that is going to be one gram of either of those is gonna be four calories. And when we look at fat, one gram of fat is gonna be nine calories. So it's really going to help where it's low volume and you're able to get more in, and again, get more bang for your buck. But with that, like fiber, fat does slow down digestion. So you are gonna need to play around a little bit. One thing can be using coconut oil because it's a medium chain acid and it's going to digest a little bit faster than a long chain fatty acid. You can also take a look at using oils like olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, that those are going to be very low volume and going to be very easy to add to your meals. Another great thing is to be able to add things like nuts and seeds, but if you are trying to lower fiber, you might want to stay away from some of those nuts and seeds. But some of my favorite things to add in are gonna be like hemp hearts, as well as flax seeds and chia seeds. Again, great, great benefits for you. So low volume and so easy to throw into so many different meals. I'll go ahead and give you some extra tips before I wrap this up. But if you're struggling with eating, being able to use a bigger plate or bowl is actually gonna be helpful. There are studies on what it is for not only the color of your plates and bowls, but also the 
size. And so if you put your meal, which might be the exact meal you're supposed to be eating in a bowl that's way too big for it, you're going to think it's a smaller meal and it should be easier to eat. And same thing when it comes to the contrasting of plates. If you're in a dieting phase, you actually want it to contrast heavily with your meal. So if you have a meal with like rice in it, you might want to have a dark bowl so that it has that contrast. But you're gonna think the opposite when you're having a low appetite of let me put this in something that's the same color. So rice in a white bowl or being able to have yogurt in a white bowl because that is going to make you think that you are eating less than you are because of that change or that lack of contrast there. Another thing that you can do here is start eating earlier in the day and pre-planning your meals. I know for myself in different growing phases, it came to trying to eat the same way when I was either in a deficit or at maintenance, but it required a lot more effort to get that amount of calories in and do so in an efficient way and that made my digestion feel best. It made me feel best because there's times where I was eating and I was feeling sluggish and I really wanted to still have my energy throughout the day. So eating a little bit earlier in the day instead of waiting till later, being able to pre-plan your meals so you know exactly what you're eating, when you're eating it. Not only is that going to eliminate decision fatigue, but it's going to take away that wasted time in between meals of you trying to figure something out and then that taking up too much time throughout the day. Or maybe you're like myself and you just choose to push off eating a little bit longer because you don't know what you're going to eat and you might as well get one more thing done. Another thing you can do is go ahead and drink your meal. Like I said, within liquid calories, smoothies are gonna be a really great option. I know you're not gonna drink a soup, but a soup can be packed full of calories if you want it to, as well as being able to make sure that you don't drop your NEAT. So NEAT is gonna stand for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And basically that's just gonna be the movement you get outside of regular exercise. So don't go into a place where you're not moving your body a lot because because moving your body can help with not only your structure and your body composition, there's a ton of benefits of getting out in natural sunlight and it is going to help digestion. So being able to, again, keep digestion prioritized through all of this so your appetite can stay in the best possible place for you to get in the food that you need. So I would absolutely love for you to join the physique development family. My name is Coach Sue and if you want to join the family, go ahead and hit the subscribe. And if you're already subscribed and you want to be notified on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, when we have videos go live, go ahead and hit that bell to get a notification every single time we post. We'll catch you next time.